Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about sweeteners and we're going to get through every type of sweetener you see here. So it's gonna be a bit of a rapid fire video, but I'm hoping to point out what are the main differences between these sweeteners or is there any difference between these sweeteners? Let's go. Let's start with the most obvious type of sweetener because when most of us say sugar, what are we talking about? Well, it's usually these little white crystals. You would call this table sugar or granulated sugar. But really, sugar is a really broad term for a lot of molecules. What is actually in here is a sweetener called sucrose. These are little sucrose crystals. Now, where we get sucrose, we usually have two main options. We can get it from sugar beets or sugar cane. So all we have to do is take either of these crops and squeeze them for their juices. Well, for the juice, it's really not that sweet yet. What we do to make sucrose or table sugar is we take the juice and use a lot of heat to boil off the water and this concentrates the sucrose molecules. Now, once we have enough sucrose and we've lost a lot of water, what we do is just let that solution cool and the sucrose starts to crystallize out into these white crystals that we're so familiar with. Now, like I said, you can use either sugar cane or sugar beets. There's not really much of a difference. The only things worth pointing out are that in the US, most sugar beets are genetically modified, like nearly 100% of sugar beets are genetically modified. So if you eat organic candy, you'll notice the sucrose comes from sugar cane. And then if we use sugar cane to make table sugar, we get a second type of sweetener called molasses, which I'll get to later in this video. Perfect. On to the sugar, which I just think is the sugar known for making the most mess. I'm talking about powdered sugar. Now powdered sugar, the funny thing is, is it's simply table sugar. So it's those sucrose molecules. Sucrose is the sweetener, but you just pulverize those crystals. So you pulverize these crystals from table sugar and that gives you powdered sugar. Now, these small, small particles of powdered sugar sometimes stick together really easily. So usually powdered sugar has a bit of cornstarch added to it just to prevent everything from caking together. But overall, powdered sugar is just table sugar, but a much smaller particle size. On to my favorite sugar to eat, which is brown sugar. I've loved eating brown sugar since I was a kid because it tastes delicious. So brown sugar is actually very similar to table sugar. So those crystals in brown sugar are again sucrose. However, the brown color from, comes from molasses, which you probably know is a really dark brown syrup, which I'll get to molasses in one second. But really all brown sugar is, is again those sucrose crystals with a little bit of molasses added back in, which explains why it has this dark brown color. I guess since we're talking about molasses, we might as well cover molasses as a type of sweetener. And molasses comes from the production of table sugar. It's when we use sugarcane to make table sugar. The byproduct or maybe co-product is a better term is molasses. It's just like the leftover syrup after making table sugar. And so because molasses has been boiled so many times as we're trying to concentrate sucrose to make table sugar, it undergoes these browning reactions, which produces the brown colors and like those caramelized flavors that are very distinct to molasses. Now molasses is, you know, a sweetener. It is still mostly sucrose, but it's more used for, I would say it's distinct flavor. It's brown flavor and colors rather than solely sweetening whatever you're baking and cooking. You really add molasses to get those caramelized flavors. Next up is turbinado sugar, which is this really pale brown sugar that usually has coarse crystals, like bigger crystal sizes. And this is an interesting sweetener because recently 
it's marketed as like it's a raw sugar or less refined sugar. Oftentimes that's not actually the case. You should be a little wary and turn that box of turbinado sugar around and see what it actually is because often products sold as turbinado sugar are just granulated sugar with some brown color and flavor added back in. So it's not like it is actually less refined or raw. It's all just a marketing gimmick. But if you do find a real turbinado sugar, what it is, even though those crystals are bigger, they're still sucrose crystals. So it's still the same sugar in table sugar. It doesn't matter that the crystals are bigger or smaller. You can control that while you're making the sugar. It does. It has no effect on like the nutrition, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So you have sucrose crystals that are bigger and then that brown color indicates a bit of molasses is added back into it. Moving on to something called invert sugar, which I don't think you would buy in the grocery store. I don't think you'll find it, but you will see it on the ingredient statement of a lot of the foods you would buy in the grocery store. And invert sugar gets its name because it's made by this process that we call inversion. And inversion just means we start with sucrose. It could be from sugar cane, sugar beets. It doesn't really matter. You just need some sucrose and you either add heat or some enzyme that will basically karate chop that sucrose in half, which gives us two new sugars. It gives us equal amounts of glucose and fructose. And these are two new sugars we haven't really talked about yet. So glucose and fructose are different than sucrose. They have a different chemical structure and different properties. For example, if we say sucrose is our standard for sweetness, we'll say it has a sweetness level of one, Glucose, on the other hand, is only 60% as sweet, or it has a sweetness level of 0.6, whereas fructose, this other sugar, is actually really sweet. It's twice as sweet as sucrose, and that's why fructose has become really popular in processed foods because it's very, very sweet. All right, I think we're done with all the sugars I want to talk about that come from sugarcane and sugar beets. So now I wanna move on to a new source of sugars that you all probably are familiar with, and that's corn. Now, corn is a bit different because corn is mostly starch to begin with. And if you've ever eaten starch, which you probably have, it's not sweet at all. So to make sugars from corn, we basically have to chop this starch into really small pieces and those small pieces are actually different types of sugar. So starch is this huge long molecule and to make sugars, either we have to add an enzyme and an enzyme really just acts like a scissors and clips that starch into pieces or we have to add acid conditions which also will hydrolyze, ooh, hydrolyze that starch into smaller pieces. So we have to treat this corn starch in some way or it's not going to be sweet and so once we process the corn, we get a bunch of different sugars. If it's hydrolyzed into one unit, this is called glucose. If it's hydrolyzed into two units, the sugar is called maltose. So what we get by this process is corn syrup, which you are probably familiar with. So corn syrup, regular corn syrup is mostly glucose, maybe maltose, which is again, is that two units of glucose linked together and a bunch of other different sugars at lesser amounts. Now, the reason we see corn syrup in so much of our food is, as you know, this is a liquid. So if you are starting with sucrose crystals and you need to dissolve them, you know, if you use table sugar and you are in a food processing plant, it's an extra step to dissolve that table sugar. What would be easier is to have it in liquid form like corn syrup to start with. And that's why a lot of our foods now have corn syrup in them. It kind of skips this extra step of dissolving the sugar. Let's stick with corn syrup for just a little bit longer because I want to talk about high fructose corn syrup, which is slightly different than regular corn syrup. And I know a lot of people do not like high fructose corn syrup, mostly because it has found its way into a lot of our processed foods and there there is a reason for that I'll get to that in one second but high fructose corn syrup what you start with is just regular corn syrup but you can add this enzyme called glucose isomerase 
And what this enzyme does is it takes the glucose molecules and corn syrup and converts them into fructose molecules. And the reason you would want to do this is because remember, fructose is just such a sweet sugar. And so how high fructose corn syrup has found itself into, you know, like every processed food is that it's so sweet, you can add less of it into a food, but still get the same level of sweetness. So a lot of foods that maybe once had sucrose in the form of granulated sugar, by switching to high fructose corn syrup, they can add less, but get the same amount of sweetness. So it was this more economical option from like a money standpoint that food companies could achieve sweetness, but use less of an ingredient and spend less money. I didn't, I didn't want the light off while I was doing a video. Okay, what is next? All right, honey. I feel like honey recently has become really popular as a sweetener. And I think that's because people see it as a more natural option, right? It's made from honeybees, it's from flower nectar. So it, it kind of has a better reputation right now. But honey is interesting, of course. The bees start by collecting that sweet nectar from flowers. And really in the nectar, the main sugar is sucrose again. But honeybees in their saliva have an enzyme that will clip most of that sucrose apart. So again, it forms glucose and fructose. So by the time we see honey in the store, this is mostly glucose and fructose, making it really similar to invert sugar. You'll see it's like a small amount of sucrose still intact, maybe a small amount of some other random sugars, but mostly honey is sweetened by the presence of glucose and fructose. Next up is maple syrup, and I want to talk about real maple syrup, not the cheaper version like uh, this in the store. So this I guess we call it maple syrup. This is really just corn syrup with added brown color and flavor. And I know that because it says so on the ingredient statement, but I wanna talk about real maple syrup because we already talked about corn syrup. And it's not that I have anything against this syrup. This is obviously what I eat most. I've eaten most of the syrup and I, I don't mind that it's corn syrup, but it's something like real maple syrup is interesting because this is gathered from the maple tree, a sweet maple. We gather its sap and actually the sap doesn't have a lot of flavor or sweetness. It's really the processing where we boil off most of the water in that sap that really concentrates the sugars there and makes the sweet maple syrup we know. So the sugars in maple syrup, real maple syrup, will predominantly be sucrose, but because we boil sap for so long, some of the sucrose goes through that inversion process we talked about earlier. And so really it'll be a mostly sucrose, but some fructose and glucose as well. So it's a mixture of a couple different sugars. And the last ingredient I wanna talk about today is date sugar, which I think is sort of a funny ingredient because it's really just dates like pulverized into a very small particle size. But the reason this works as a pretty good sweetener is that dates one contain a ton of sugar in the first place and most of the sugar is fructose, that really sweet sugar. And so it's a decent sweetener if you're baking or cooking. Uh, if you add too much date sugar instead of table sugar, you'll probably notice a change in color, texture, and flavor. So really date sugar is just to be partially replaced sucrose. You're probably not going to be using 100% date sugar. And that about wraps it up for sugars and sweeteners. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel and be looking out for another video on high intensity sweeteners and reduced calorie sweeteners. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.